I'm a video and photo gathering robot. I'll be at Maker Fair, North Carolina, June 15. Welcome to Hacker Week. I've got a piece of Cat5 cable here. I'm going to use five of the wires in here. The other ones I wrapped up, saved here. Good lesson I learned a long time ago. You have a lot of wire on a loom, just wrap up anything left over and stick it here if you're doing prototyping. You have it for later, right? So this will go to the torso sensors and then go up to up, as in this will be the other way around, uh, up to the head where the Arduino brain will be. So I need to wire these up now to those five points on the sensors, left, right, front, back, and a common ground, which is these wires here. All right, let's do it. Okay, last one wired up. The sensors now have a loom that runs to the top. I now need to get a piece of wood in here to serve as the top, the basis for everything that will be on the head, all the cameras, the electronics, stuff like that. So I need to measure what this is and cut a, uh, a piece of wood round that size. Looks like about eight and a quarter inches. That may be uh, a little loose, um, but that's okay. I'll cut it eight and a quarter fat <laughs> and squeeze it in there, possibly sand it down a bit. If it's a little too big, you can always sand it down. So let's uh, get that laid out with a compass a piece of wood. I'll find some wood now. Mm. See how it fits. Oh yeah, there we go. It's a beautiful thing. Drops right in there nice. Now I need to punch a couple of holes in this. I'm just going to put about four holes in it, some for future use. Uh, big holes with flat bottom drill bit. Then we will permanently affix this into there. Not quite big enough. Well, one of the holes is going to have to be bigger than that. So I'll drill a couple more like this and then go up to the inch and a half drill bit. All right, the wire loom is brought up through. I got this old school cloth coated wiring that's going to connect to the uh, Arduino. That's going to be pretty cool. I've got a speaker mounted in here. Got the ethernet cable which is connected to the sensors all up here on the top. I'm ready to put the Arduino on. You gotta see this up close. So the Arduino, the Leonardo, is gonna mount up right about here. This thing might end up with a couple of Arduinos. Um, I got some crazy ideas. Anyway, these wires will go to the uh, microcontroller, these cool looking old cloth coated. This is neat, I like this. It's old technology cloth meets new technology MCU. I guess I'll have to get it up here nice and close to the harness because the wires need to go down onto it. To help me out with that, um, I am making a uh, shield for it, the best I can anyway, with perf board. Perf board doesn't line up perfectly if you use the small square pieces, so the ones Radio Shack has. So I pieced a few together, and all I really need them for is just to solder on the strips of wire a little bit easier than connecting them to a header pin. So that's, uh, let's see, that's up next. Let's solder that together. Okay. 
Okay, let's solder up the shield. The Arduino Leonardo is mounted up and uh, ready to be wired up to the old school cloth braided wires. Mmm, goody. All right, wiring up the motors to the Arduino. The H bridge actually on the uh, Roomba mainboard down below. Turn on the switch now. Okay, that's the right motor reverse. And that goes on pin number five. So now I can take that and solder it onto pin number five after I put a little fresh solder on here. This is a little old, this stuff. And the wire is pretty corroded, so it takes quite a bit of heat. And a lot of uh, patience letting the rosin do its thing, bubble away and eat off all the oxidation. Okay, let's clip that back just a little bit. And let's put it on to pin number five. So there's zero. Remember, zero always counts in this kind of work. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right there next to six. Um, let's route this in there. Right through here. I think we'll look good. I love to make nice, clean wire harnesses when hooking things up. It's just a, one of those things you can actually have as a point of pride. People look at your work and go, wow, that's that's really nice soldering and wire routing. And you smile and nod. Why, yes, it is. Thank you. I learned how to do that on Hack a Week. Oh, well, maybe you already know, but anyway, if you don't, hope I can help you learn. There we go. That's soldered up. Now, let's see. What else? Uh, I've got to power this thing up. So before I go too much further, I, I want to get the head mounted on here and kind of get an idea of how much room I have to work with on this platform to mount another Arduino and the Emic 2 text-to-speech module. So here is the assembly that will be going on the top of this structure over here. The cone is there to deflect sound from the speaker, which is uh, right down there. And I have some pieces of uh, an old wind chime aluminum tubing that will go over these lag bolts and space this thing accordingly. So I'm going to mount that up now and then we'll see a little bit better where I have room to mount the cameras and all the other hardware. So here's Photon with all cameras mounted up on the head. Here we have the JVC that will be doing time lapse. This is the Canon HD that I've been using for all my video. Right now I'm shooting this video on the Canon XS10IS in uh, movie mode. This is my old Motorola Triumph. That's the one that will be transmitting the Wi-Fi signal back to my display booth at Maker Faire. This one right here is my uh, Motorola Droid HD. That's the one that will be transmitting through the uh, Verizon network to Ustream live all day long. So that's the head. It's just missing the mouth right here. The speaker's down there. This cone is to help project the sound out from the Emic text to speech module. I've added a little terminal block here. This was off from one of those vintage electronic uh, thingies from that one video. Uh, it was just a simple terminal block someone used for wiring up an experimental circuit and I put it on here because it's kind of cool. I've got my uh, 12 volts coming in here so it's kind of like my power distribution block. Now I can go 12 volts over here to the Arduino and ground voltage to the Arduino. Here's the sensors. They are all soldered up there and this is the motor leads. Those are soldered up. So uh, let's see. All I have left to connect to the Arduino is the power the ping sensor and the Emic 2 text-to-speech module. Ooh, tricky. Yep. 
Yes, that's right, I was using side cutters there to strip the wire. If you're very careful, you can do that. Get this positive wire tinned. I like to put a little solder on the tip, wait for a minute, and then apply the solder to the thing you want to tin. And it'll always shrink back the insulation a bit, so then I always clip it back a little bit. And then we'll connect that to the voltage in on the Arduino, which is, uh, on the Leonardo anyway, anywhere from 12 to 7 volts. That's the operating voltage for the device. There we go. We've got power now to there. Now we just connect these leads to the power bus. We'll be rocking. Hey, remember Betty and Zero, the talking boxes with the Emic 2 text to speech module from Parallax? Well, this is Zero. And Zero is going to sacrifice his parts for a while so that Photon may speak. So, anyway, I've got to get all this stuff out of here. I might or might not use a second microcontroller. Uh, with this project. I'm really not quite sure yet, but anyway, there is the uh, text-to-speech module and it's mounted on a board that takes the output, amplifies it through an LM386 audio amplifier, and then uh, runs the whole works into this motor, and that's what activated the mouth. Well, on Photon, that is going to be replaced by this little thing right here, it'll mount somewhere in the front. I'll put some LED lights behind it and modulate the LED lights with the voltage that used to go to the motor on this device. So now it's time to get all this out of here and salvaged in one piece. Okay, it's connected up to the existing speaker. Hello and welcome to Hack Elite TV. I am called Zero. And so that's the program running that uh, used to be in the Zero Robot. Hello and welcome to Hack Elite TV. I am called Zero. I think this is going to work out just great. Okay, all the guts are pulled out of Zero, and there's the Emic 2 text-to-speech module with the LM386 amplifier, and then a little circuit that uh, converts the sound into a voltage output. It's connected to a Arduino uh, Uno. That was what ran Zero's program and over here I have a LED array I made it's a parallel array of 12 blue LEDs and they are running with no resistor really really bright let's go ahead and uh, power this thing up and see how they modulate with the voice hello and welcome to Hack Elite TV I am called Zero that is a beautiful thing I'm gonna put this grill over it we don't have a voice now so that'll look pretty cool and I'll mount that up on the head of Photon and it will serve as an yes. indicator. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Anyway, uh, that's the deal with that. So I've got to get that mounted up now and then get all this hardware mounted on board up here someplace. There we are. The wiring is in place from the text to speech module to the Arduino. Uno, by the way, I switched over to the Uno from the Leonardo. I'm going to keep the Leonardo for some other projects. Ping sensor temporarily here. Um, don't have any code uploaded just yet for moving around, but I did upload this little demonstration. Hello, my name is Photon. I would like to sing you a song. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I am half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage. But you'd look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. And there we have it. Now let's move along to getting this thing moving around a little. Well, Photon is coming along pretty good. I've got a lot of work to do between now and next weekend at Maker Fair. I still have to mount all the hardware on top, but I do have the Arduinos. Yes, two of them. One for the Emic 2 and the other one to drive everything and control the sensors, which are now online. The front bump sensor backs up, turns, built-in delay. Then it can gather some imagery wherever it's pointing. 
I'll demo the other one now. If it hits the right side, it'll turn the other way. Again, same delay, then it can gather some pictures. And here's the left bump switch. Let's do that one again just to turn it around some more. And the rear bump switch uh, isn't really working at the moment. Ping sensor. That works. Funny thing with the rear bump switch, um, the way I've got the code going right now, it's running a routine to do something if one of these states changes. It's an if statement. And then within that if statement, what I wanted to do was have the reverse one, the backup sensor, kick in if it bumped into something, but I was having a hard time figuring out how to do that. I am still such a newbie with C code programming, and I'm learning every time I mess with the Arduino. That's what's fun about it. Uh, each time I do one of these projects, I come out the other side with a little bit more knowledge about C programming, which is way cool. So let's see, where are we at? Next uh, weekend is Maker Faire, and by then I've got to have all the hardware mounted up on the top here. Um, that would just be the two video cameras and the two smartphones. That's just hardware issues at this point. And then write a little bit more code for the Emic 2 uh, to deal with. And uh, you already saw him speak in the intro and the lights light up here and all that. And then what else? Uh, the bump sensor around the bottom uh, need to do something with that still. So I got the bottom bump sensor, the hardware on top, a little bit more code. Oh, and two LM317T uh, circuits that I'm building. Got them started right here. Uh, need to get some resistors for those. I need two power supplies at 5.2 volts each to run the two video cameras. Each one of these can handle about 1.5 amps load and those video camera power supplies are rated at 1.2 amps so I reckon I better have one voltage regulator for each camera. I have got a super busy week ahead of me, so be sure to tune in next time and uh, we'll say hi from Maker Faire. So uh, access to the bottom of this when I need to swap out the battery is uh, four screws that hold the bottom to the top. I'll take those off and I will show you how easy it is to get in there. And I probably... We'll have to do this at some point during the day at Maker Faire. Here's the plug that I put on. That comes off. Then we just lift this up. I had this tipped over a minute ago, so I'm not sure where the battery is sitting at at the moment. Yeah, it's a little, little cattywampus. So uh, there's the battery. It sits like that. I suppose I should put some sort of a, a strap on that to keep it from moving around. Uh, one more thing, too, I want to show you. Um, I went back to the original setup with the wheels across the bottom again, dual, and a couple of chair casters I found, and uh, all the locomotion you just saw in that previous scene is happening with that. It's a much, much better setup, and uh, I might have a little problem going over some obstacles, but I can live with that because it's going to go this way and this way a lot easier. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you at Maker Fair, North Carolina, June 15th. Till next time. Okay, so let's get all that mounted up and then we can start. We must have a voice now. Stop interrupting me.